What's up guys, welcome to a new episode of Filmmaking Friday. Today we're gonna to talk all about the camera shutter. Filmmaking Friday. Welcome back to the series. Today we're gonna to dive into the world of camera shutters, how a shutter works, which shutter to use when, and how to alter them for some creative styles. So let's get started. The camera shutter is a crucial component in every camera that controls the duration of the exposure. It determines how long the camera's image sensor is exposed to light. Before we dive into the different camera shutters, and some more technical stuff, let's talk about the effect your shutter speed has on the image. The shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second, such as 1 over 50 or 1 over 1000, or even shorter or longer, depending on your camera's capabilities. Now let's first talk about photography here because it's easier to understand. Fast shutter speeds, like 1 over 1000, freeze motion and capture sharp images, while slower speeds, like 1 over 30 or longer, allow for motion blur, creating a sense of movement in your photos. When shooting a video, the typical rule for a natural cinematic motion blur is the 180 80 degree rule, meaning your shutter speed should be double the frame rate. Last week's episode was all about frame rates. Your shutter speed should be 148. Since most consumer cameras don't have these exact settings, the next closest to that is 1 50th of a second. If you're shooting in 60 FPS, your shutter speed should be 1 120th of a second, or 1 125th. For example, on my FX6, which is a professional cinema camera, you have the option to either set the degree, so the motion blur is adjusted automatically depending on your frame rate, or do it manually by adjusting the shutter, and here you're able to select for example, 148th. Higher shutter speeds are often used in action sequences where you want your footage to look more crisp and real. When you pause the video here, you can see you have an almost perfectly sharp still frame and higher frame rates are used for more dreamlike sequences or for example, as cool music video effects like I used it here in a music video. Here I have a few examples for you on how different shutter speeds affect your motion blur. In this example, I had my friend wave at the camera. Of course, I adjusted all the other settings to counteract so the exposure is correct while changing the shutter speed. So this is 1 50th of a second, 1 25th of a second, 1 20th of a second, 1 4th of a second, and now we're getting faster, 1 100th of a second, 1 250th of a second, 1 over 500 of a second, 1 1,000th of a second, 1 4,000th of a second, and 1 8,000th of a second. The first one is just your normal 1 50th, creating a natural motion blur. The next example is 1 25th of a second, 1 20th of a second, which introduces a little more motion blur into the image. And when we shoot in 1 4th of a second, we get the dreamy or trippy look I mentioned earlier. Now let's get to the other spectrum by having a faster shutter speed. First, 1 100th of a second, we instantly recognize the hand is way sharper. At 250th of a second, we have just a little bit of motion blur left. Here at 1 500th of a second, I think we could argue that for the waving motion, the motion blur is finally gone. And here you have 1 1000th of a second, 1 4000th of a second, and 1 8000th of a second. With no motion blur at all, and just sharp, crisp still frames. Now let's explore the two main types of camera shutters, mechanical and electronic. First, we have the mechanical shutter, which exists of physical curtains that open and close to control the exposure time. You also saw a mechanical shutter in the intro of this series. It's from an old Canon 700D DSLR camera. This type of shutter is commonly found in these DSLRs and traditional film cameras. The mechanical shutter offers precise control over the exposure and can handle a wide range of shutter speeds. The mechanical shutter operates in two phrases. The first curtain opens to start the exposure and the second curtain closes to end the exposure. The time it takes for the curtains to travel across the sensor is known as the shutter speed. The global shutter captures the entire frame simultaneously. Instead of scanning line by line, it exposes all pixels at the same time and then reads the data from the image sensor. The advantage of the global shutter is that it eliminates the rolling shutter effect. Since all pixels are exposed simultaneously, there is no time difference between the capturing of different parts of the image. This results in better, more accurate representations of fast moving objects and reduces distortion. However, it's worth noting that global shutters are not as common in consumer cameras and are typically found in professional grade cameras or specialized imaging devices. This is because implementing a global shutter requires more complex technology and it's very often more expensive. Now let's move on to electronic shutters. Electronic shutters are commonly found in mirrorless cameras and some modern DSLRs. Instead of physical curtains, electronic shutters use the camera's image sensor to control the exposure. They work by turning the sensor's pixels on and off to capture capture the image. Electronic shutters offer several advantages such as silent operations so you can turn off the satisfying click sound when you take a photo, which can be good for, for example, weddings or taking secret photos. Be sure to turn off the flash to be discreet. It's also great for high speed shooting and no mechanical wear and tear. They also eliminate the risk of camera shake caused by the movement of mechanical curtains. However, electronic shutters may encounter limitations with rolling shutter effects, especially when capturing fast moving subjects or shooting under artificial lighting. The rolling shutter is a type of shutter commonly found in consumer cameras, including most DSLRs and smartphones. As I already said, it works by capturing the image or video frame line by line from top to bottom or vice versa. The process is basically like a scanning motion. 
Now here's the catch. When using a rolling shutter, the image sensor captures different parts of the scene at slightly different times. Even though it's just a fraction of a second, as a result, if there's any movement within the frame, it can cause a distortion known as the rolling shutter effect. You probably have seen this, it's really ugly. The rolling shutter effect is most noticeable when you have straight lines in the image, especially when capturing fast moving objects or panning the camera quickly. Not very aesthetically pleasing. On the other hand, we have a mechanical global shutter, which operates differently from the rolling shutter. When choosing a camera, it's important to consider your specific needs. For most casual photographers and videographers, the rolling shutter is perfectly adequate and widely available in consumer cameras. However, if you require precise and distortion-free imaging, especially when capturing fast action or working in professional settings, a camera with a global shutter might be the better choice. Now that's it for today's episode, I hope you found it informative and useful. As always, feel free to leave any questions down below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Next week we're gonna talk all about f-stop, so be sure to come back for that. See you next time.